A&M Corpus Christi loves to get offense through defense. They're top 10 in the nation in turnovers forced per game. They had trouble in that category against Nichols yesterday and just their fourth loss of the year. We're underway as the Islanders have the ball first. They're in gray and McNeese in blue. Simeon Fryer doubled and called for the travel. But David, is that uh, an indication there? You, you know, you you force turnovers, and how does the game start? Yeah, right away, a turnover. So that's what they do. They're one of the nation's best, and in steals, and so you've got to take care of the basketball. You've got to be strong. And you've got to be really solid with the ball. Miles Lewis, part of Magnesia's starting five, is the team's leading scorer, but just a 12 a game. You get balanced output from the Cowboys throughout the season. Where you see someone break out. Nine players score between five and 12 points a contest. Nice feed inside by Taylor, finds Lewis for the game's first point. Well, that's a great look. Usually you don't get that type of opening on the uh, interior on a drip, and he was open. Usually the corners are open, not, <laughs> not at the rim. Here's Mushila with the basketball, finding Fryer from the corner. Tennyson knocked it out of bounds. I'm interested to see, Ben, how Corpus comes out. At 12 and 3 before the loss yesterday, Nichols was very physical with them, and it had a huge impact early. It was a game in which the Colonels never trailed in their victory. Well, Texas A&M Corpus Christi has been in some really good games. We'll talk about that later. But, you know, there's nothing like playing a conference pro. You kind of know each other a little bit. You've got to get up. And just, they're going to have to play each other it's maybe three times, four times this year. Zach Scott for three. Second on the Cowboys in three-point shooting. And an early 5-0 lead for McNeese. Mushila drives to the rim. Well, he couldn't believe how open he was. I, he just pulled up short on that one. But if you're playing against McNeese, you've got to get down there. They, they want to get inside. Kellen Taylor, former football player, former player at Duquesne, who I've covered before. Very athletic. He can really get to the basket. Uh, an emotional player. He's got to keep check his emotions because he was uh, disqualified with technical fouls in, in his opening game here. He's got to just keep his, his head in the game. Very valuable player for these Cowboys. Third game in three days for all the teams here today. Could that be a factor? Absolutely. Scott off the mark. And the Lazarus Keys chases down the rebound. When a team plays a third game in three days, do we usually see the impact late? Yeah, I think you do, David. I think early you're playing on emotion and adre adrenaline. So, yes, it, it, that's something that has a cumulative effect on you. You're going to see that down the stretch of the game. Missed free throws, errant passes, just uh, get, like, not getting back on defense. Good defense by Lewis. No double on Mishir. Ten on the shot clock, still but, at litter ball. But, you know, you've got to really gain this type of uh, a format. You've got to get used to it because if you have any aspirations of playing NCAA basketball, advancing out of your own tournament, you have to play three games in three days. If you have to, if you don't have the luxury of taking the day off. you got to play every day, every night. The four of the eight teams in the league, when we're back here in March, they'll need to win four in four days if they want to make the NCAA tournament. Jackson off the mark as the shot clock went down. Here come the Cowboys, and Lewis on the reverse. It's a 7 nothing McNeese lead. Well, how did Lewis get by the baseline? That's a no-no. Rolled the baseline. Mushila. Ah. Offensive rebound, Keys. Keys rattles it in, and the Islanders are on the board. That's a much-needed basket. You know, McNeese is, has the ability to get off and get good starts because they're aggressive defensively, so you've got to match that. You can't let them go on runs. Cowboys three for four from the floor in the early going, and no turnover. Spoke to the baseline, too long out of Taylor, but the tip in by the 7-1 junior, Brendan Medley-Bacon. Well, he's had a good tournament, David. He's really shown that his game is elevated. He's been able to knock shots down, offensive rebound, and he's really good defensively. Uh, of course, I mentioned that he, and he, and he picks up a foul, but he, he really is uh, he's a factor inside. So as, as he gets better and matures and, and gets into his game, he'll help these Cowboys. There's no doubt his presence will be felt. 
Well, it's something you don't see often in this league anymore. Someone as tall as a medley bacon at 7-1, who obviously can have an impact defensively for sure. Well, he blocks shots, but you know, more importantly, I've always said this in blocking shots, David, he affects shots. And that's what you want to do. You know, the block shots aren't as important as can you affect the shot? Can, can you, are you, uh, is your opponent thinking about and altering his shot because of it? Reese Nicholson off the bench, loses the basketball. But you can see the enthusiasm on the McNeese bench and Coach Aiken, he's, a, he's ecstatic because that's what they do. He, he wants to force turnovers, he wants to get the, you know, get the game going and, and that's what, that's their identity. And when that's your identity, you, you make that happen. And John Aiken told us when we spoke to him before the tournament, because he's been an assistant at McNeese and Nichols, he says, this is an identity mentality league and that is even much more important than X's and O's. Well, it is, and every coach tries to establish an identity, whatever that is with your team. And once your team knows what it is, they can play to that. It's, it's something you can hold on to when the chips are down. You go back to your identity when you start to lose uh, momentum. It always helps you. Talent's important with any team, right? But in the Southland, more so than, say, a lot of your high major leagues, the, the talent is, isn't going to be so much more towards one team than another. That's when that identity and mentality comes into play. Nice move by Fryer, but he couldn't finish. No, it's a good point, David. And, you, you know, uh, having been at both levels, I, I would attest to that. And uh, you're, you're exactly right. Ooh, what a great move and finish. The step through. I, I've, I've seen so many Euro steps. Everybody's mastered that move. Uh, but it's Miles Lewis with the step through. What a great move. The line transfer has six. Yeah. And McNeese forces another turnover. Scott with the basketball. But then Nicholson pokes it away. Mushila inside. Layup falls. And that's Nicholson for the Islanders' second field goal. You know, they, they gave that up and they, and they end up scoring. But I still think that takes its toll on you. Even though they, they gave it up, you know, that's in the, that's in the mind. Uh, of, of the Islanders, they're going to have to play against pressure. They're going to have to play against duress. And most players don't like playing against pressure. Left open, Scott. Murdoch skies for the rebound. Off the bench, he's the leading assist man for the Islanders. Here he comes. Nice move inside, but too long. Game to game to game habits and success. It's really important. And you can see the emotion, David. Just you know, look at the players here. It, it just seems like there's a great, this is just not a normal non-conference game. I know you're playing against your conference foe, but and it's, it's called a non-conference game, but you're playing with emotion. And I think that's very important that, that these games do mean something. You're, you're getting a chance to really play uh, with that type of mentality. Islanders have won the last 10 over McNeese. Cowboys forced the five second call right out of the timeout and they have the ball again. Well, forcing turnovers is what they do. That is their identity. Colin Warren lost it out of bounds. It's the Islanders that are the top 10 in the nation in turnovers forced per contest at 19. That's just the Cowboys' second so far. The Islanders already have four. Well, it's important that you take care of the ball, but you know, for teams that force turnovers and understand pressure and the psychology, sometimes. You, you, you know, that's your Achilles, too. You end up kind of getting in a game that's really pressurized, and, and you end up uh, turning it over as well. They find Mushila posting up on Taylor. Short. He's got to the ball, but it's picked up by Scott for McNeese. Racing down the floor. And they're going to say a jump ball that Miles Smith was able to get enough of the basketball to force the tie-up, but the Cowboys will still have possession. Well, I thought that was a good move to expose the ball and try to draw a foul, but, you know, both teams with extremely quick hands. You talked about the quickness in this conference, David. These two teams, and we have Southeastern coming up as well. You're talking about some of the quickest teams and quickest hands that you're going to see. That Constantly, you've got to put, uh, make sure you take care of the basketball because it's going to get stripped or deflected. Seems early on with the Islanders' propensity to force turnovers, as we've mentioned, that the Cowboys are really looking to get it in transition. Here, Warren on the way up is fouled by Murdoch's free throws coming. Well, and that's the beauty of, of teams that can pressure and force turnovers. And, you know, some teams like to fast break off of missed shots, and, and I understand that, but. You know, you're going to be a much better transition team and get easier baskets coming off of a loose ball, a scramble, a deflection, a steal, and a turnover many more times than you are just from a missed shot. So that's why teams choose to pressure. It, it, you end up getting easier, easier scores. Colin Warren's under 50% from the line, but 
a young sophomore from here in Houston, was a finalist for the Guy V. Lewis Award for best high school player in the city. Went to Elkins High School. Drains them both, and Cowboys are up nine. Islanders able to make their way inside as well. Mushila's missed a couple, and their Murdoch draws the foul. Well, I've been impressed. You know, look at uh, the, the Islanders, David. They've been the team that scored all year. Mm -hmm. But look how di difficult it's been to score in this game. I mean, they're 80 a game. They're one of the tops in the country. They're struggling just to score, and because I think the disruption and the pressure is bothering them. You know, they, they're going to get the rhythm. They're going to come back, and they're they are, they're going to score baskets. But you know, this type of start is what McNeese is all about. They they really put pressure on you and so uh, you're going to have to just get back in the game now and uh, it's going to be difficult because they've established a precedent. Murdoch strains both free throws after the Christian Shoemate fell. Both these teams won their first round game here two days ago lost in the winner's bracket last night. Just led them to this matchup today against each other for third. Scott from the wing got it. Second three for Scott had three three pointers in the loss to Southeastern yesterday, part of a season high 17. Had great spacing on the floor, David. They just uh, were able to utilize the, the distance, make a cross court pass, and find an open three. Really like the way they're, they're spreading the floor. Stephen Faramide muscles his way down low. Shoemaker got the block. Faramide makes it on the second oh, chance. I love that. That's the ability to go up strong and you know where your shot's going or not going because you're the one shooting it. Uh, it kind of gets deflected. You take it, you score it, you go right back up. That's what you're supposed to do. Second effort. Don't hang your head if you get your initial shot blocked. Lewis. Looked like the fire might have gotten a piece of it. Here comes Murdix. Faramide spins and fires. Rebound into the hands of Lewis. That leaf got open again. <laughs> Mushila forced him to pass it off. Was that tipped? Miles Smith is still going after the basketball. And that's a heady play by Kellen Taylor. He first was going to let it go and then you know, soccer style trying to force a corner. No, no, David, he, he got his body in the way. That's not soccer. That's football. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been around soccer too much. That's football. I'm a Midwestern guy. That's football, and that's Kellen Taylor using his skills. He, he, there's no way you're going to get around him there. But, uh, you know, that, that is actually a soccer move, too. But I don't think he, that he knows much about that. That was a, that was football all the way. Can't push the guy down if it's football? Oh, uh, well, I'm not sure. Maybe rugby. We'll watch soccer together soon. Yes. You'll see how that goes. David, they've got to get to the foul line. When your shot's not fouling, falling, get to the line. And that's something they've done all year. They're one of the tops in the country at drawing fouls. And if they can get there, that's going to really help them. Nice feed inside. Miles Smith gets the layup. Murdix, the team's leading assist man, gets the dime. How about that look coming out of the timeout? You, I just wish they'd chart that. Coaches are just masters. Masters, great job by Coach Lutz coming out of a timeout to get his team a layup. Natalie Bacon doubled. Resetting with 10 to shoot. Here's Trey English, the freshman guard. Got bumped. Well, that you know, it was a short clock there. I know Coach Lutz is trying to encourage his big fella, but, you know, kind of let him off the hook. They were really running out of real estate over there. And that's got to be discipline. You're short, short on a clock. You've got to... You mentioned coaches in the bench guy has to be verbal about that. You know, you really got to be disciplined right at the end of the shot clock. Shot clock resets to 20. Colin Warren with the basketball. Cowboys have not trailed. In fact, Corpus hasn't had a lead since the opening game. A win over Northwestern State. Natalie Bacon. Call for the walk. The travel call by Kelly Hunt out on the wing. <laughs> Well, the Islanders, Islanders can disrupt you as well. You know, you, you, you and, and teams understand that. Uh, you know, McNeese knows they're playing against a team. Really, that's like looking in the mirror. You've got to take care of the basketball as well. You, you like the force turnovers, but you're playing against a team that likes the force too. Maddox gets by Warren. Too hard off the glass. Second opportunity falls. Well, how does the smallest player on the floor go up and get his second a ch chance attempt gets his own rebound and just sneaks it up there i mean wow 
Maybe the second smallest. Six in here, like going for yeah. verdict. I don't want to. I don't want to cheat him. <laughs> he's listed at six one. Yeah, but still, he's probably the smallest guy on the floor. <laughs> I've had a lot of players listed at certain heights, but, but that's just a great hustle play. And you know what? The Islanders need that. They need to, as many opportunities as they can. They're prepped right back in this game, David. Four in a row out of the timeout. She made for three. Oh. Rebound poked into the hands of the Islanders. Here's Smith. Well, nothing comes easy when you're playing against Magnese. you got to work. Trey Tennyson that's floats it in. Six in a row for Corpus. Done. That's getting it done. I tell you, David, they've crept right back in this thing. They've narrowed it, but they've chipped away. And guess what? They've done it defensively. You know, you talk about the shots they've made, but they've gotten stops. When you get stops, you can put less pressure on yourself. English for three. Fight for the rebound. And diving on the floor. That's Lewis taking it away. Shoemate out leaps San Antonio Brinson for the basketball. Cowboys still have possession. Warren. Team's really fighting here, but a foul. And if that's on Medley Bacon, I believe it is. That's his second. Well, David, I'd like if there's a 50 50 ball out there, he's like a pogo stick. He'll go up and get the ball, he'll keep it alive. He's he's had just a, a, a whale of a tournament, uh, been very active for his team. He's, he's played his best basketball as of late, last three games. Yeah, you saw his 21 point 13 rebound performance and the double overtime win over UNO two days ago. Well, he's come on, and that's the beauty of playing these games that you know you get a chance to get players into rhythm. When you play one game every week or two weeks, or there's a there's a disruption for whatever reason, injury, uh, COVID could, could be that. You lose that rhythm. You get a chance to play three games in a row, and you just came off of maybe a, a game right before the tournament. That gives you a chance to get there, you know, just get back in the game. Keys gets the roll, and it's now officially a 10 nothing run to get the Islanders back in it and tied with McNeese. They've been you scoring 80 points a game. You know, you're not going to be worried about being down. You're going to figure a way to come back, but you got to play defense. You can't exchange, exchange scores. Taylor needs help. Find Scott, 10 on the shot clock. Taylor fires from long range. Got it. Just his fifth three of the season, and it ends the Islander run. He's a very confident player, David. I'm not sure he's a great shooter, but you can't tell him that. He's he's going to knock down shots because he thinks he can knock down shots. I, I admire players that have that confidence. Ten a game for Taylor coming in. Friars lob, Brinson, or other keys trying to go after it. Instead, is taken away by Scott. That shot would not have counted, but a foul on Tennyson, his first. Well, you see again that McNeese will just keep pounding you. And they'll, they'll get def deflections, and they come up with a loose ball, a, a chance to score. It's just nothing easy when you're playing against them. You really gotta, you've got to take your time, and, and you can't rush yourself because they will get you out of your rhythm. They've disrupted everybody in this tournament so far. Taylor transfer from Albany and Duquesne. Tried to feed Scott inside, tipped away. And a steal for the Islanders, averaging under 10 steals the game coming in. Here comes Jackson. Jackson transfer from North Texas. Scoreless so far today, second on the team in assists. He needs help now and finds Keyes. 10 on the shot clock. Keyes fades over Shoemate. Rebound by Lewis. You know, David, I don't know when you'll find another game when you find two teams. There's a travel, probably. Yep. And we're really right off the bat since his arrival. Again, it's his first season in Corpus. They're 12 and 4. And not just the loss to Nichols yesterday, but their other three losses at Minnesota, at Texas AM, at Notre Dame. It's been a great start for the team from Corpus. But it has, David, and you know, you've got to prepare for them because they, you know, pressure is not easy to play against. Miles Lewis in transition short. Jackson the rebound. How tough is it really for both these teams, uh, the way the defenses can steal the basketball, to uh, prepare for systems like that in under a day? It's a, it's really a, a challenge because you have to now play with your head up. You're going to have to put in your high post flashes, your back doors, space the floor, and, and have back cuts versus overplays. You just can't run your stuff. You've got to come up with and really put another segment in, in your practice session say, hey, here's what we're going to do against pressure. It makes it very difficult to prepare. 
Warren from up top. Yes. His first three in the fourth for the Cowboys already. And you hit shots like that, makes it even tougher to, to prepare. Now you got to get out on the three point shooters and you got all that room to, 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 to drive. So you have to defend one on one. And that's the hardest thing there is in, in any level of basketball game, really defending the basketball with no help. I, I challenge you to find something more difficult than that. Allen has rallied a tie. Six in a row now for the Cowboys. Analyzed it, said, let's play on. So just the first foul on Taylor. Trey Tennyson with the inbounds. Hoping to get things going. No three-pointers yet today. And that inbounds pass, that's the second time that the Islanders have just struggled to get the ball inbounds. Called for a five-second violation earlier. And that pass simply goes out of bounds to McNeese. David, I've alluded this before, but it's worth saying again, you know, uh, teams that force turnovers and get steals understand the psychology. Unfortunately, they understand it the other way around. Both teams know pressure they know what, what pressure can do and so it ends up sometimes hurting you because you say wow if this team can press like we can press you end up not being as good as you want to be and as strong as you want to be uh, it, it really does you, you to prepare for a team that presses you or plays this way you have to come up with things that you normally don't come up with in your normal prep the Taylor miss didn't hit rim so shot clock does not reset still at 13 I'm not sure it might have hit this top of the roof if you're at <laughs> The way that, <laughs> Almost. Yeah, that thing was sky high. That brought some, some fog and some rain. Six on the shot clock now. Here's Taylor with Mushila covering. Short on the jumper. And Mushila gets the rebound. Mushila scoreless. Very slow start yesterday after just a dominating performance Thursday. Had 21 points, nine rebounds in the first half of the win over Northwestern State. No, oh, they need him. Tennyson trying to get it going. Off the mark from three to the rim. Off the rebound is Murdix. Well, it's been the guards for the Islanders that have kept the ball alive and scored. You know, sometimes you, you want your guards to get back in transition, but the Islanders have gotten away with being aggressive on the glass and going and, and, and scoring. So uh, here the Cowboys. You've got to keep those pesky guards out of there, too. Taylor finds Scott from the wing. Yes, his third three. He continues his hot shooting in Katie. And that's set up by the inside presence of Kellen Taylor. Season high 17 for Scott yesterday. Murdix misfires. Offensive rebound to Keys. Tennyson in traffic to the rim. Nice move and finish. That was a great move. Avoided the contact and the shot block and scored it. You know, both these teams are extremely quick to the basket. I said it again. I'll say it again. Guarding one on one on the perimeter with little to no help is an impossible task. Somebody's got to get in there and close the gap. You usually don't want to help, uh, you know, from the top, but you've got to get in there and close the gap. Pick and roll pass to Shoemates. Draws contact in the foul. Nice feed from Taylor. Well, I love the roll again. Shoemates really a tough player as he gets near the basket. You know, he screens, you help out. If you're his man, you're hedge out on the screen and, and you're not going to get back to him rolling. That's somebody else's responsibility to pick up Christian Shoemate to the basket, but he's so quick, you've got to put a third defender on him. He was quiet yesterday, but you saw the 21 point, 13 rebound performance against UNO. Double overtime victory. Had eight points in the extra frames and a block at the buzzer to end the first overtime. Cowboys would pull away to defeat the Privateers in the second overtime, but also 18 points a couple of weeks ago against Kansas State. Double double early in the season against LSU. Well, you may be quiet in scoring, and it was just in one game in his recent four games. But he's still active, Dave, and I, I think that you can be, you, can, you, you may not have a big scoring game, but you're rebounding, you're affecting the game defensively. Uh, that's what active players do. This doesn't have to be about scoring every night. You just impact the game in other ways. Murdix bumped by Shoemate. Now there's a fatigue play, I think. Uh, Christian Shoemate's quick enough to get out there and catch that screen, and he was just a little bit late. And I think, you know, you, you see this after three days of playing, the, the feet aren't moving quite like you want them to, and, and the coaches will remind you that. Sometimes they'll give you a blow, get you out of the game, get a rest, and sometimes you're just gonna make yourself move. Moving your feet's the biggest challenge when you're fatigued. 16 foul for the Cowboys, and Shoemate now with two goes to the bench. Now he's got to sit out. Natalie Bacon. Big man for McNeese, back on the floor with two fouls, and Murdix challenges him and scores. I'm impressed with the Islanders' guards because they show no fear, and they just take you to the rim. You, you've got to get out there and close the gap, and the help hasn't been there. The guards are very quick. You've got to get out there, but Coach Lutz has some very quick guards on his team. Murdix with 10 in the early going to Pace Corpus. 
Lewis, hanging in the air, got him blocked by Fryer. Gets it back, and it's a lot of fun for his fans, uh, but for coaches how, and players, too, how much of a grind David, is it? You know, when you have a style of play or excel at certain things you do, you don't you don't really have to change or prepare as much. You say, let's do what we do. My staff and I would always say that. Hey, let's not change what we do. Let's, let's go out, especially three games in three days. You can't reinvent the wheel. You can't go out and start changing all the offenses and, 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 and change what you're going to do. You're going to have to say, let's just really do what we do and do it well. And that's what these two teams do. I really think that these two teams kind of are exemplary of what, you know, how you can really survive in tournaments like this because you're going to stay true to what you do. Now, if you do it well, you're in great shape. If you don't, you're, you know, you're not. But, but I don't think you can, you know, surprise and change with your team. It's just there's not enough time, as you say, between games. You, you literally don't have that many much time. You've got very little preparation, if any, between games. And sometimes you have to see a new player step up offensively. Terry on Murdix is the Islanders' leading assist man, but after drawing the foul on Colin Warren, chance to get to 12 points. Well above his average of seven and a half a game, he does dish out four assists a contest, but it's his scoring that has helped the Islanders to within two. Well, they've got a number of guys that can score. That's the advantage of their team. They, they, they can put different guys on the scoreboard. And, uh, you're scoring 80 points a game. That's a luxury. And so if they can lock down defensively with the points that they score, uh, they're going to continue to be successful. Ten to shoot. Here's English with a basketball double. Natalie Bacon, tank of the roll. Corpus Christi has not led since the end of the game Thursday. A win over Northwestern State. This would give it to him, and halfway down for Tennyson. Keys, though, saves it to Murdix. Melvin Bacon comes away with a block. Under three minutes to go, first half. English draws contact and a foul. Well, that's what they can do, and both teams have the ability to get to the line. And that's, again, what you what you want to do when you're playing against pressure, David. Sometimes you've just got to put the ball down and go. You can't stay in one spot, pound the spots up, and allow somebody to get up in you. You've almost got to take the ball to the basket. And, and you used to say that to teams that pressure, hey, don't be afraid to be aggressive and, and attack because you have to play aggressive, play aggressively, and aggressive teams aggressively. Uh, you know, you've, 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 just like when a team presses you, if you pull it out, they're going to keep pressing you. You've got to try to score. So that's what this team's doing. I, I, I think I think you see uh, McNeese trying to play against pressure by taking to the basket, but you also see a &M, uh, Corpus Christi, what they're doing is they're taking to the basket as well. Both teams are very aggressive to the room. Freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, Trey English, makes both free throws. Cowboys are up four. He scored the first seven out of the gate. Mishila is still scoreless. 0-4 from the floor. Tennyson double finds Mishila. Ten of the shot clock. Tennyson for three. Yes. His first three had five yesterday in the loss to Nichols. Well, they're coming on now, David. They really don't. They had such a slow start. A lot of it's because of McNeese. But now they're in a rhythm, and they've come all the way back here. So we've we got a great game on our hands, but uh, both teams really uh, playing against the pressure, handling it now much better. Inside, Lewis wants a second chance. Ball bounces out to Fryer. Islanders can take the lead. Keys off balance, and that's the long lost lead the Allers have been looking for. They come back from 10 down and up by one. Well, that's a heck of a shot. That was almost off the wrong foot, the wrong hand, uh, right hand on the left side. I defied all the odds, but he goes in. A great look to the basket, and now it's the Islanders that have taken this lead, David, and turned the tide on, on the Cowboys. Approaching 90 seconds remaining first half. Eight on the shot clock for Scott. Catch and shoot, Taylor. Whistle on the rebound. It's going to go against Corpus. Jackson picks up the foul, and it'll be free throws. Actually, no, apology. 16 foul on the Islanders, so a fresh 20 coming for the Cowboys. Well, the Islanders have put teams to the line. They get to the line, which is a real plus, but they've also put people to the line, but they're fortunate now that McNeese is not in the bonus. They play pretty good defense without fouling this game. Scott, that's his favorite spot. Can't connect on this one, however. 
Jackson racing down the floor, finds Tennyson for the corner. Another one. And David, the ability to get to the rim really enables the Islanders to get corner threes. That's exactly what you want to do. Open the floor, go hard to the basket, force help, and then and then try to fan out to the corners for, for a wide open shots. Textbook basketball. Scott. Yes. Now that you can see the confidence, and you were right, even, even though he didn't hit the last one, uh, he's really got the ability to get that shot. I think it's going to be a timeout here by the Islanders. They're going to talk. But they scored either. But David, that's what good teams do. They find a way. You know, when your leading scorers aren't involved, or maybe they're not scoring, or other teams are taking them away, the other guys have to step up, and that's the beauty of team basketball. That's why this team has been successful. Other guys have stepped up, and they've stepped up today big time. Tend to shoot. Jackson finds Fryer and a bump as the shot clock was winding down. Yeah. It'll be a one and one coming. And again, David, that's just the, you know, you just have to talk about that and then also be disciplined. You're, the shot clock's winding down. You're going to have a tough look at the basket as the shot clock winds uh, and, and about to expire. You're not going to get a good look. The last thing you want to do is foul. And I know the coaching staff will talk about that. Coach Aiken's very disciplined. He's got his. You know, he's got a disciplined uh, coaching staff. I know the coaches on his staff. They, they do a great job. They've just got to come back and talk about things like that. You cannot continue to put uh, AM Corpus Christi to the line, and that's what they do. They get to the line 20 plus times a game. One of the best in the country. Fryer hits the front end. Corpus now five of five from the line this half. That's it. McNeese five of six. Uh, they, they're lucky that they haven't you know, been there because uh, they, they've really established themselves as a team that can tow the charity stripe. Uh, they know how to get there. Friars first two. You got the last shot now if you're McNeese, and you got to make sure you don't turn it over, no offensive fouls, and maybe allow yourself a chance for a putback as well. We're down to eight seconds. Warren with the basketball. Needs to hurry. Three seconds now. Warren fires. Looked awfully good so far here. Well, you're talking about they're playing, they're playing three great teams in this tournament. So no, none of these games have been easy. So you just have to show up and show up and play. Uh, but they had a tremendous win over uh, UNO. Now they got to step up against maybe the hottest team in this league. Second half underway with the Islanders controlling the basketball. Semyon Fryer, just two points in the first half. Finds Mushila, who's yet to score. Mushila doubled with six to shoot. Tennyson unable to connect. David, that's how you want to start the half. That's a tremendous first <laughs> possession defensively for McNeese. Now if they can turn it around and get going offensively against the Islanders' pressure, that's the second part of this. You've got to, you know, it's one thing to play the defense. Now you've got to handle pressure. Cowboys turn the ball over eight times in the first half. Jonathan Massey feeds Miles Lewis. Cut off with eight to shoot and stepped on the baseline. Let's turn over number nine now. Well, and then there you go. And so... It, you know, the turnovers and pressure have a uh, really a, a kind of a, um, a cumulative effect. You know, and I can, it could be from one half to the other, but you're going to have to handle that pressure, and it's going to be relentless. It's going to come almost every time down the floor. Jeez. Now Tennyson. Flags in the air. Medley Bacon might have altered the shot. Taken away by Scott. They make him have Scott didn't see him to the rim. Cross contact and a foul. That's well, seven one two forty five with the light feet. No, and I like it, David. I like the you know the, from the top there. You say, well, why is the big fella out the top? Because he's agile. Number one and number two. That's the perfect place to put the ball. If you're going to be playing against an aggressive team. If you side the ball, in other words, you put it on one side of the floor, the defense can load up. You put the ball in the middle of the floor, there's no cheating on the play. So that's where you want the ball against pressure teams. Keep the ball in the middle and attack from there. Played at VCU last year, Brendan Medley Bacon, third team all MEAC at Coppin State in 2019. What's the ceiling in your mind? Oh, I think he's just gotten better at every stage of the game. You know, big fellas always take time to get better. I, I've coached enough of them to know that, that, you know, they're the slowest to develop. So it's just a work in progress. And I like I like his development. Michelle left wide open, looking for his first points. May have been too open. Too open. <laughs> yeah, David, I thought the same thing you did. You know, he, he hesitated twice. And, you know, you're, you're that open. I think it surprised him. But you got to pull the trigger. You can't size it up. 
you got to be ready to go. If somebody leaves you that, that open, it's okay. Here you go. A pass kick, so 20 on the shot clock for the Cowboys. That's usually not how you play against great players, <laughs> leave, leave them that <laughs> wide open. Well, I was about to say, I've been surprised. How surprised are you that Michelle has just had trouble getting it going? And yesterday also it was good from the free throw line of the second half, but really slow most of the game against Nichols. You know, and although the Islanders forced the turnover, again, their leading score not on the scoreboard yet today. Yeah, you know, that's the, but that happens when you're playing against good players. You know, the other team's preparing. They're going to do some things to take you out, take you out of the game. So, you know, other players have to step up. And when you start giving up easy baskets, you know, you're going to come back to the players that weren't scoring that, that uh, you know, were being guarded tough. And they're going to get better looks. Here's Mishila on Medley Bacon, short on the shot. Now, you talked about Medley Bacon. There's where else his worth is. He's, he's tough at the rim to go over. Lewis off balance. Medley Bacon the follow. David, that's just great basketball play by Medley Bacon on both ends, defensively, and now coming back with the pushback. That's just really being on top of things. That's helping his team. Islanders off the scoreboard this half. Cowboys with the first three. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, Mishila again hesitated, then hits that three, but he didn't want to shoot it initially. No, I think that uh, Kellen Taylor uh, egged him on a little bit there. He challenged him. You could see him barking at him. Shoot it, shoot it. And he did. And sometimes you, you know, let a sleeping dog lie. You know, you don't want to wake somebody up. And I think Kellen Taylor just woke up his opponent. Mishila can hit those. He's six of 14 feet beyond the arc this season now. Now you, you know, uh, I, I know sometimes a scouting report can lie too. Medley Bacon with position, two more. David, what was so good about that play? He never put the ball on the, on the deck. Great individual play by Medley Bacon. He's beginning to pick up on both ends. Keys over Medley Bacon and draws the big fella's third. Well, he has been playing perfect basketball this half until that play. He actually bit on the fake, and big guys like to go for ball fakes. Don't ask me why. I've had enough of them all in my career. You know, I'd say, can you please stay down on the fakes? I'd just do anything else you want, but don't leave your feet on a fake. And sure enough, big fella, you know, wants, they want to block shots and uh, left his feet. Now he's going to probably have to come out, uh, you, know, you know, at least uh, pretty soon. He'll leave him in now, but you don't want to pick up a fourth. Yeah, it's interesting. John Aiken's not going to his bench. What are your thoughts? No, here? but you know, game three, David. You know, you're here to play, and and I, I, you know, you're not you're not playing. This is not to see who advances right now. This is he wants his players to get experience. I'm with that. I'm all about that. I one think of he's two, making the right decision. Sorry, coach. One of two for Keys, senior from Orlando, Florida. Islanders up three. You're early in the second half. Kellen Taylor backing in on Mushila. Massey's pass out of the reach of Lewis, the turnover. David, how about the individual defense? First on Kellen Taylor, just not allowing him to get to the rim. Second, up top defensively, not allowing player, you know, guard penetration. I mean, they took away everything that the Cowboys were trying to throw at him. And well, that was just a good defensive possession for the Islanders. And 12 first half points. Draws the foul on Scott. Well, remember we were talking earlier, David, about the some of the fatigue setting, and you can see now that the players aren't quite moving the same way defensively. You saw it at the other end. I thought the Islanders were particularly quick. Uh, but now McNeese, you know, just a little bit step slow on some of the defensive coverages. Uh, but I like the positioning. They're in the right position. Jackson in the paint. Bentley Bacon gets the rebound. That's what they need to do is force the ball down into the big fella because it's been hard to go over the top of him. To your point about continuing to play solid defense and really keep your energy up in this third game in three days, a lot of these games come down to a battle of wills, right? Absolutely. Just mental toughness, David. It's not physical toughness at this point. You got to stay with it mentally, too. And they confront it, but still interesting in our last seven games. You said that big men are the last to develop on the college level. Is that offensively, defensively? What comes from? I think both, David. I, you know, I've coached a number of seven footers. I had Francisco Elson who went on to be an NBA player, uh, Jamal Sampson, uh, Solomon Hughes, a number of players in the past that were seven foot, six, six eleven, and they were good players, but you know, it just took them some time to develop. And what I like about Brendan Medley Bacon is that he's getting better. He's you know, he's got a good feel for the game, he's playing a little more confidently and calmly. You know, he's using his head. I, you know, when you're seven one. 
uh, you know, you can affect the game. He doesn't need to block every shot. He can affect every shot. You just make it tough. Mushila with position, and let's see if the Islanders can get him going. Hit a three earlier for his first points of the game, and the leading scorer for a Corpus coming in has five. Well, the challenge that Coach Aiken has is he, he was very clear of what his team needed to do. He saw what happened in the first half. Now you've got to get that message across. Your players have to be able to pick it up and, and, and make it happen. They just they shot themselves in the foot by turning it over, getting less shot attempts than the Islanders, and that's something that they've really been great at all year. Is they, and they've taken more shots than their opponents, but they're getting fewer attempts because they've turned it over. Shot clock winding down, and Scott misfires on the off-balance three. And that was not a great look. So, again, it's the Islanders' ability to disrupt up now McNeese. McNeese usually disrupts teams themselves, but they're really running into a problem, uh, you know, of getting good looks to the basket. Natalie Bacon got his hands on the basketball as Tennyson went up. Lewis, Mishila poked it away. And that's a tie-up. Cowboys will have possession still. Well, David, you see how difficult it is just to get a clean look to the basket. It seems like every possession down, there's a there's a poke away, there's a, a denial, and you're going a little further out on the floor. You're getting later on the shot clock. It's becoming harder and harder. And Coach Aiken and the staff have that challenge to get their team to really just, you know, get in there and, and try to ease your scores. They've really struggled to get good looks. And that's not even as much about McNeese as it is about the Islanders and their ability to take you out of what you are trying to do, something that McNeese knows a lot about. That's what they've done to their opponents. Also, the Cowboys short-handed Harwin Francois that banged up yesterday, averaging six points a game and their best three-point shooter. So, the ability to hit from the outside affected because of Francois' absence. That's another turnover. That's the fourth of the half already for McNeese. David, that was a good look. That was a great set play, uh, which should have been a sure two. I, I just, it's just been that type of you know, series now for McNeese. They've just struggled to make some of the easier plays. Natalie Bacon stands his ground with yeah. three fouls, forces the trap. Yeah, well, you see what he did. He must have hurt us, David, because he didn't leave his feet. <laughs> but uh, believe me, he didn't hear me. He heard his own coaching staff who do a great job. They've done a great job with Brendan Aiken, I, uh, with uh, uh, Natalie Bacon. Just a great job of making him a disciplined player. He's improved. That's coaching, and that's a, a credit to the player, player uh, for making that those strides. Massey works his way inside, and the deficit down to one. Well, that's huge. Now, those kind of plays, when you take your time, it's, you know, you can get a good look like that. They just haven't had many of those, but they're right back in this game. Verdict's a hot first half. Finds keys. And ouch. Hitting the floor hard as Taylor after he first landed on Keyes' is back. And fortunately, the graduate from Landover, Maryland's okay. That is Taylor picking up his second foul. And as I mentioned, I just think defensively, if you look at McNeese, they started out with so much aggression. It's just they haven't been able to move quite as well. And you can see a little bit. I just, I personally just think it's a little bit of fatigue. And it's understandable, David. These are three, they, they played hard games, three hard, hard games in three nights. That's just really demanding. Players aren't used to that this, uh, this time of the year. And they've had layoffs, too. Also, what John Aiken told us before this tournament began, he says this is an identity mentality league and certainly tested late in a tournament like this. Well, this is going to make you better. I don't care how you come out of this. You'll be a better person. You'll be a better team. You'll be a better player. Murdoch's pass off Mushila, unable to save it, a turnover. But just when you thought the Islanders were turning the tide, you know, how about the pressure of, 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 of McNeese? And Medley Bacon gets two high fives from teammates going back down the floor because he stopped Murdoch's drive, which led to that turnover. David, I, I can tell you he'll have some looks at the next level because of how active he is and just how much, how improved he is. Taylor, call. This is a Lake Charles area that's gone through two devastating hurricanes in, in, in recent years. He says that he wants to make sure that not only can he have players that can embrace each other as a team, but also embrace the Lake Charles community, which as you well know, uh, one of the best stops in all of the Southland Conference will be there beginning next season for four straight years for the Southland Conference Tournament. A steal and Christian Shoemake to the rim gives his Cowboys the lead. Well, first, David, to your point, uh, I think Coach Aiken is the right guy for the job. And Heath Schroer made a tremendous decision 
But at the same time that, you know, he, he just, he's, he's done a great job there. And that's a great quote because you want people rowing in the same direction you're rowing with, mm -hmm. you know, the same guys uh, in the boat, in the bus, whatever the analogy is. And in, to fit your community, that's important. You're not just playing for a basketball team. You are playing for a university. You are playing for a community. And guess what? If you get that community to come out and support you, your university supports you, um, that, that's huge. Those young men are going to feel good about themselves. And kudos to any coach that does that, that goes beyond just a, a typical goal, just a win and a loss. The Cowboys to play at the new Legacy Center for basketball. They've been playing off campus at old Burton Coliseum for many a year. <laughs> And so happy to be in that new facility where the conference tournament will take place yes. beginning in 2023. I remember McNeese and Lake Charles well. I coached against Joe Dumars back in the day. Yeah. Is that right? That's another story. Only the best player to ever put on a McNeese uniform. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I, I, Murdoch as the shot clock winds down, misfires, and the Allarders are now cold offensively. Haven't hit a field goal in three minutes. Colin Warren unable to finish. Medley making the rebound. You know, the measure is not what you know, it's what your team knows. And they, they, they perform. Okay, you're a head coach at a place like Texas Lutheran. Now, again, you played there, didn't coach there, but you're not just coaching, right? You're you're mopping the floors. You're making sure the gym is unlocked. <laughs> it's not just coaching your team to hopeful victory. Now, you're, you're and, and you know, you're humble. Uh, there's no task that's too it's that's not, that's too big for you. you. You're right, and it's it's a it's just a way of life. So I, I a lot of respect. The Lazarus Keys has given his team the lead, 42-41 Corpus, and the pressure defense leads to another turnover. That's the 15th for the Cowboys. Islanders coming in top yeah. 10 in the nation and forcing turnovers. Yeah, David, I, I think I made this point. I think it was last night. I, I think it's worth making again in terms of the most important pass to me is your entry pass into your offense. If you don't get into your offense, it's disruptive that your poor spacing was out of the floor, you didn't get the net clean entry, you're gonna struggle to, to hold possession. It's just that that's how important it is. Miles Smith finds keys and keys two in a row, now in double figures. Well, penetration again is what's causing the breakdown, but really more, more so giving the Islanders a chance to get easy baskets or getting penetration. Taylor lost it, another turnover, here's Mushila. Miles Smith, biggest lead for Corpus at five. Again, David, you, you know, if you're McNeese, you've got to settle down, you've got to get into your offense and get a flow. They, they're not in a flow right now. The ball's been popped away every single possession. And then Warren loses it. Smith, reverse, short, out of bounds. It's still Islander basketball. Well, I was surprised he didn't go right up for a layup. He could have drawn a foul. He decided to go to the other side, avoid Christian Shoemate, who hustled back, fortunately, on that play and saved the layup. That's three turnovers in a row for the Cowboys coming out of the timeout. Yeah, and you know, again, David, it's just, it's, it's something you can't be successful if you don't get into your offense and they're not getting into their offense. It's one thing to miss shots. Good defense, Taylor on the Sheila, who backs it out. And Murdix will reset. Ten to shoot. Smith cut off by Medley Bacon. Now five on the shot clock. Key shoots. Connects. Three straight field goals for the senior from Orlando, Florida. David, believe it or not, that was a very good possession defensively for, for McNeese. But guess what? Corpus Christi just a little bit better on offense. That was a really tough shot at the end of the shot clock uh, to score it. But I thought McNeese had a really good possession right up to the last shot. Taylor connects, and that ends a string of four straight turnovers for the Cowboys going back to before the timeout. If you don't turn the ball over, you get more shot attempts, you get more possessions, the game simplifies for you. you you've, you've got to give yourself a chance by playing possession basketball. The more possessions you get, the better. Catch and shoot Fryer. And a push on the rebound. Taylor's picked up his fourth. Yeah, and he didn't have to do that. He had pretty good position, I thought. Um, just, you know, playing a little physically because he had inside position. He was going to get that basketball, and I think he just, again, he, he, he put a body on him and extended his forearm. Uh, just needed to go straight up for that ball. But again, this is early in the year, and I like Coach Aiken putting his arm around 
you know, his spirited player, Kellen Taylor. <laughs> you know, give me a player like Kellen Taylor. He's going to make some mistakes. He'll do some things that you might scratch your head. But in the end, you want players that have that passion on your team. Keys feeling it. Misfires this time. Despite the recent Islanders run, the Cowboys deficit just five as we approach nine minutes to go. Whistle away from the ball. You know, David, I mentioned this before, but McNeese has the ability to draw fouls and get to the line. And, and you know, you can't get to the line if you're turning the ball over or you're just, your offense is disrupted. If you can get to the, to the rim by dribble, by pass, every time they've gotten deep position, good things have happened. They've gotten the ball in the bacon, and, and, and good things have happened. But you can't turn it over, and, and you, you know, you, you can't take a bad shot. you got to get to the rim. Warren's pass tipped out of bounds by Mushila. Easier said than done, by the way. <laughs> This game does come down to free throws. Advantage Islanders. Cowboys as a team just 58% from the line, although they are 8 of 10 tonight. Shoemate looking to get going. Michelle got his hand to the ball. Smith gets his hand to the ball afterwards. And a steal. Plus the finish. Oh, don't call that. Oh, it's a late whistle. I was surprised about to say that that would be called a block, but Tucson Grigg correctly calls it a goal. Well, and Christian Shoemate didn't, you know, again, just a, just a step slow t tonight, David. He was had such a hop in his step the first two games here. He just, you could see it now. He just didn't see it coming. Maybe he wanted, he wanted his teammate to tell him that. But it's just, you can see the fatigue just really starting to creep in here with McNeese. Massey pressured. And here's Shoemate. You saw his athleticism on the block attempt oh, before, great. but, but no. to your point, just three points so far tonight. Yeah, great hustle. David, when you're when you're playing against pressure, you, you know, I, I think uh, it's, it's maybe simplified simplified to say this, but when you pa you want to shorten the angle of a pass, I'm passing to you. You're getting pressured. You got to come meet the pass. If you allow a defender to step into a passing lane, I should, a I shouldn't throw that pass. B, you know, if you hear the receiver, you've got to shorten that pass and run through the ball. And that's not that's what McNeese is doing now. They're just they've got to really make it simple. Shoemate. Another turnover. But that, David, that's a good look. They went inside, but they just, they're not converting. And that's unfortunate because uh, they are trying to get the ball to the basket. And you think it's just, it's a product of the Islanders system, and they're so good at forcing turnovers, top 10 in the nation, but also maybe a little fatigue oh, on the I, Cowboys in. I think it's both. I think that that's, you know, that's what you want to do if you're a pressure team. You want fatigue. I'm hoping to provide a spark. 11 McNeese turnovers this half, 19 overall. And that's after Coach Aiken <laughs> told us, told his team, hey, we got to cut down on turnovers to get back in this game. Pretty feed wouldn't fall. That's Murdoch's drawing the foul. And I believe Medley Bacon has picked up his fourth. He's been on the floor quite a bit with three, but now four fouls for the big fellow with 7.47 to go. You know, David, you, you still, again, you, you want to play your players and you're not saving him. I think he's done such a good job, Brendan Medley Bacon, for his squad for McNeese. He's, you know, he'll take a break here. He has to with four, but you know, having him on the floor affects the game. He, he affects the game on both ends of the floor, uh, and so he's going to need a little help, though. He, you know, he's. I think he's he, he's done some good things today. Almost have a double double but he's got to get his teammates to step up. And, you know, the ball has not gotten into him around the basket. It just, the, the, it, there's either been a turnover, a fumbled pass, or a miscue. Murdoch makes both free throws. His first two of the half, 12 in the game. He kept the Islanders in it in the first half after the Cowboys got off to a hot start. They led 16-6 at one point. Here's English right off the bench and finds Taylor, who draws the foul. So instant impact for the freshman point guard. Well, I like that. I like the penetration, that, and that's what the Islanders had success doing, is getting the ball to the rim, the guards getting the ball to the rim, and then either finishing or fanning the corners for three-point shots, uncontested shots. And that's what the success was, McNeese, of getting the ball in Taylor's hands. We've spoken high of Taylor one season at Albany. Former great Dane averaged in double figures in 50 games at Duquesne prior to that. He had 18 points, nine boards, and the loss to Southeastern yesterday. No, and he's an aggressive player. He, you know, he's he's a player that plays with high emotion, uh, active. He's at that difficult size. You know, he's not quite a big guy, but he's not quite a guard. He's at that, you know, this, people say that's it's kind of an odd size. Well, I think it's a mismatch size and for your advantage. It's, you know, I'm not sure who to put on him. He's hard, hard to play against. Plenty of time left for the Cowboys to come back. Just under seven and a half to go. 
catch and uh, shoot. Smith from the corner, falls, and a foul. Taylor has picked up his fifth. For all the transfers, Corpus has 10 to lead the nation. The graduate, Miles Smith, mainstay in Corpus Christi, comes up with one of the biggest shots in the game. Well, that was huge. Good rotation. The shot goes up. And Taylor with the unfortunate, you know, unfortunate, a misfortune, unfortunate to foul at the end of that play. You do not want to foul a three-point shooter. Uh, Four-point play, did. And you can see Taylor on the bench. He's just, he's upset, obviously upset with himself, upset that things aren't going the way that, that he wants things to go. And, you know, it's just tough. It kind of snowballs when things aren't going your way. You know, you need somebody to pick you up. And Coach Aiken just pleading with his guys, hey, hang with it, stay with it. And, and you know, he's doing everything he can. David, I've been there. I know what Coach Aiken's going through. Sometimes the heart just, you know, and the, the mind and the heart and the body are just two different places. Uh, but, you know, they got to match his enthusiasm uh, on the sideline. He's really trying to encourage his troops. 16-5 Islander run. And yet, to your point, I mean, he's been kind of smooth and steady throughout and showing as much energy on the bench, being cheerleader now, trying to feed some energy to his team. Three-second violation called. Well, that's a baby step, you know. <laughs> Anything you can just to get back in this game. You know, David, this the game, the season's going to go on beyond this game. They've got a long season. They've got to learn how to play through these valleys. What do you do when your shot's not fun? What do you do when you turn it over? You turn around and you don't turn it over the next time. You don't compound your turnovers. That's what pressure teams want you to do is compound turnovers and then have it affect the rest of your game. These doubles on the perimeter to the Cowboys' ability to get the offense going. So here they find English open, off the mark. Massey fighting for the board, gets it for McNeese. Fresh 20. Aaron feed. It's off Smith. Almost another turnover. Well, they, they, you know, that's a start, David. They, they re regroup, they got an offensive rebound, another look, another possession. It's amazing what you can do if you can just keep possessions. And McNeese has always done a good job. They're one of the top teams in the country in field goal attempts. They've had trouble getting shots off. Forget about making shots. They've had trouble getting their shots off today because they haven't gotten down to the shot. Nine of the shot clock. Scott trying to get good. This fires from long range. Keys the rebound. Anticipation that's English with the steal. English lost it. Jackson tried to save it, couldn't. But you you know, you've got to do a better job of getting to those shots. Now they have not been able to get shot attempts. Miles Lewis doubled. Those are hard doubles by the Islanders all night. She's made an impact. Seven to shoot. English finds Lewis. Lewis leans in. Jackson the rebound. Jackson finds an open. Smith wants another three. Medley Bacon the rebound. Well, that might have closed the door, David. Hey, that shot. McNeese fortunate that the open jumper didn't go down. They're going to have to now get a score and stop. Scott finds Medley Bacon. What a count at a block. Two free throws coming for the 7-1 junior. Well, what a luxury it is to have a Brendan Medley Bacon on your team because he's always a target to the rim. And you can see that he was there sliding in a little bit late. But, but you know, Medley Bacon, is he's a weapon, David. And, and as they just, as the season goes on and they, you know, utilize his abilities, they're going to have, they're going to find some easier ways to score. But it, they, when you talk about getting easy ways to score, that doesn't go in the same sentence uh, with A&M, uh, Corpus Christi. They do not give you anything easy. And so you've got to really invent some other ways, you know, whether it's penetration. I really think when you're playing against a team that's aggressive, you've got to get the ball to the rim, either by the pass or by the penetration. Uh, and, and if you're playing east-west against pressure teams, you're going to lose every time. If you cannot play without playing aggressive to the rim. Everything you do must be predicated on getting the ball to the basket. Andy Bacon, this is his best game of the tournament. Misses the free throw, but one rebound away from a double-double. 
This team go down 10 as we approach five minutes to go. Nichols in southeastern Louisiana for the tip-off crown. Coming your way a half hour after we're done with this one. Ten of the shot clock. Mushila to the rim. Fryer, the nice feed. Well, I love the ball movement, the patience by the Islanders, and getting the inside touch. They really, that's what you want to do when you got the lead. Don't play giveaway and be quick on the trigger. They did a good job taking the clock. Shoemate pulls up, well short. Quiet game overall for Mushila, but his teammates have done the job. Leading score for the Islanders. Just hit seven points on three of nine shooting. And, the, and coach talked about it. He said, look, the other guys have stepped up. He's not really concerned. I, and I, I agree. If other guys are, you know, being fed, <laughs> you're in good shape. Four of Mushila's teammates in double figures. Shumi got his hand on the ball as Mushila went up that time. Here comes Scott. Scott got bumped. What accounted. Free throws coming for the junior from Miami, Florida. Well, and he's the one player, David, I think that, that is always X. Scott can do some really good things for his team. You know, he leads his team. He gets almost two steals a game, but he, he can make his free throws 80 plus percent. Uh, all purpose guy. He can rebound. Uh, you know, he, get, he gets he gets his team going. Uh, you know, and it's important that you do that. That the one guy's got to sometimes step up and carry your team when you're in a lull. Had a couple of good games here. Free throw gives him 12. He had 17 a season high yesterday, including three three pointers. So they transfer from Dunk City, Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah, exactly. He's got a nice touch, David. So what do you do if you have a nice touch? Get to the line. <laughs> Find a way to get there. It doesn't do you any good to have a good touch and, and not shoot free throws. But he's got a beautiful touch from the line. I, I like when he's aggressive because, you know, you don't want to foul him. He's, he's money from there. So, um, and, and McNeese usually can get to the line. So that's something that they're going to continue to do. They just have had a tough time against a very stubborn Islanders team. Today. Scott easily the Cowboys' best free throw shooter. But now McNeese needs stops. Under four to go. Ten point lead for Corpus. Keys over Medley Bacon. Nice touch off the window. Well, that's a great shot. I mean, you're going over seven, seven footer, and that's his go to move, signature move. Keats has been in double figures two or three games here, and he makes the great steal off the pass from Shoemate. Jackson, though, lost it out of it. Meanwhile, McNeese really struggling. 20 points. 20 points off the turnovers for the Islanders. And oh, now trying to turn the tide. You know, McNeese used to turning teams over too, but McNeese has really struggled. You, you're talking about a Corpus Christi team that have, you know, sometimes turnovers don't hurt you, David. There's good turnovers and bad turnovers. I, mean, I know most coaches think all turnovers are bad, but there are some that are better than others. When they lead to scores and you're converting, and this is what McNeese has done, they've turned it over, and those have led to some direct scores. And, of course, you have three games in three days. Your depth is going to be tested. And so bench points, I think, a key in all these Absolutely. games today. Corpus with a 24-10 lead in that stat. Uh, you're not going to get uh, pl get a lot of mileage of your players if they're playing significant minutes. You're not going to your bench. You've got to continue. Most teams in this league, by the way, do go to their bench. Really impressed with the coaches in this league. They, they play a lot of players. Four Islanders in double figures. Does not include their leading scorer coming in, and Isaac Mushila. Approaching three minutes to go. Keys with the basketball. 15 points today to pace Corpus. Got a shirt from behind. Here comes Scott, two on one. Scott all the way to the rim and scores. Well, I love what he did there, David. He spread the floor. He, did, he got wider than the lane line. <clears throat> you don't want to take the ball down the middle and have one guy guard two. I thought he did a great job of creating space and was able to get the shot. He's just really good in the basket. I, I really think he can be a factor for his team, not only this game down the stretch, but as the season goes on. 15 for Scott to lead McNeese. Jackson inside. Keys foul going up. Well, you find McNeese has been on the kind of the wrong side uh, defensively. They got caught there. You know, you want to, uh, Christian Chumate got caught on the on the back side. You know, you got to play between the ball, your basket, and, 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 the, and your man. And, and you know, it's just tough. I, I think the balls move pretty well. And, again, I just, I talk about, and you talked about three games, three days. You, you're, you know, you're willing sometimes mentally, but physically getting to that spot, that's just, you got to really work at it. But the Islanders seem to be the fresher team in the second half. And Coach Aiken talked to us about it at halftime, David. He said, look, this is what we have to do. We've got to cut down on the turnovers and play a little bit, uh, you know, more securely. And 
they just haven't been able to do that. And uh, as a coach, that's frustrating because you know what the problem is, but you just can't seem to fix it. Your team's in a little bit of a rut. 11 point lead for Corpus, although a foul there on Mushila. And Steve Lutz, of course, his team about to be 13 and 4, it looks like. But uh, in November, still trying to gel together with the 10 new transfers. They beat Denver at the buzzer, and then were able to go down to San Antonio, or I guess up to San Antonio from Corpus, rather, and, and they dominated UTSA on the road. And he told his team, he said, We have enough here to win a conference title. And he said, his team initially shook their heads, but maybe he could sense they weren't 100% confident in that statement. And then they go and test Notre Dame until the end, almost came back and upset Minnesota. And as the season's gone along, that confidence has continued to grow. No, you know, they've had some success there. Willis Wilson built some good teams, and I know they know each other, and uh, a lot of respect. But what happens is when you take over a program, sometimes that's a change, and, and you know, you gotta change people's minds. To, to, to you know, take the temperature of a game and make things happen, but I, I really have been impressed with the guard play from the Islanders. Murdoch's 12 points. Miles Smith, a strong second half. He has 10, his 53rd double-figure scoring game in an Islander uniform. Trey Tennyson quiet in the second half, but 12 points overall. 2:31 left. Nine-point lead for Corpus. Jalen Jackson doubled. Nine to shoot. Keys finds an open Smith for three. Mushila the rebound. Put back to the foul. Well, David, you may think he's been quiet, and he probably for his game has been, but how about that? Just if there's any doubt trying to McNeese trying to come back in this game, and what happens? She went to the basket for a chance for a three-point play. Just a huge, heady play, tough play. What a journey he's had to Corpus Christi. We talked about it all week. It came to America from Lubumbashi in the Congo, played at two prep schools. So went to Gillette College in Wyoming, the JUCO program that then cut its program. And he was left without a team. Found his way to Snyder, Texas, and Western Texas College before Steve Lutz and staff discovered him, brought him down to Corpus. He's our leading scorer and rebounder coming in. David, how, how special is he? He averages 14 points, almost nine rebounds a game, and he only plays 23 minutes a game. How about that for the stat? I don't know many players that are that productive for that few minutes. That's getting it done. Tough shot that falls for Lewis. Now that's a big basket too, and you know these these baskets now. I don't know if they're going to have enough to bring them back in the game, but you've got to look for silver linings here, and they're going to continue the press and see if they can just get a turnover and maybe turn the tide late. After we're done here, now there's a couple guys, David. If you're McNeese, that you might choose to foul. A couple guys, if you know that that's always something you can do if, if you just can't you can't let the whole clock go down. If you give up 30 seconds, it just takes possessions away. Here's Murdoch's shot clock's down to eight, so McNeese will let this yeah. possession play out. Exactly. Three to shoot now. Jackson leans in. Rebound by Massey. Four possession game though. Cowboys need points in a hurry. And Jackson will poke the ball away. Take a couple of seconds off the clock, but here's Scott. Lewis is there for the rebound. Mishila got his hand on the ball. Shoemate. And Medley Bacon can't get the follow. Oh, the Cowboys had chances there. Now they sure. Now they got to foul David. There's, there's no choice. You, you can't let the. You can't let a lot of time go. And obviously, it's possessions are going away. I think Lewis wanted a foul. They're too tired to foul. And the whistle didn't blow. Oh, Smith is going to put it up and scores. Well, you know what? I, you might as well get a shot up at the end too. But. You know, you could see again, just at the end, you know, almost hard to chase the ball at the end. They're trying to get a, an intentional to stop the clock, but just uh, just hard to catch up the ball. So the Islanders are on their way to a third place finish. With the charging call on Massey. They'll head back to Corpus with a 13 and four record. And there are only four losses at Texas A&M, at Notre Dame, at Minnesota. And then a loss to the preseason conference favorites yesterday in Nichols. What a start for Steve David, Lutz's group. That's a pretty good resume you know, to build and to talk to your team about. You know, you can throw all that out when, this, when the conference starts, but if this is any indication of where they are, this is a great start. And 
And this has been a valuable tournament, certainly, for Steve Lutz and his squad. These games don't count in the conference standings, but once they do count beginning next weekend, Islanders have a good chance to start off strong. Three straight home games against UIW.